Uh, uh, first, the, uh, I'm so happy having the opportunity to be talking to you today. I think this session is about summing up about the strategic leadership. And what I will do, but let me confess, we, we are just sharing information. We are not, whatever we'll be dealing with you here is just a method of that you are actually the real leaders and the knowledge with you. So it's just a method of sharing information. What I would like to do is really to, uh, to, to, to zoom in now to a specific case study, especially for South Sudan. A bad case study which I would like people to remind you. But I want really to, to equally ask a very fundamental question also about the, whether national security strategy is so relevant and important to, to Africa. Because sometimes some of these concepts, we take them for granted and we becoming engineering it in our system while we, we don't have a real grasp whether it is really important for, for Africa. And then maybe some of the lessons we can learn from the development that can make the national security strategy a people driven, as my colleague mentioned. And, and then I will, with some, some of those key takeaways. Now, I think we have been talking about the issue of vision, and I want really to reiterate it again, because it is so central. And I'm saying some of the, most of the strategies, they have learned a lot from the business and management. And it is, a, it is a, because the firm and the organization are quite important. The state are learning from, even the leaders are learning from the management and how you run the business. These are the main components for any success, and I think it is very important to highlight this point. One of them is issue of values. The values countries have shown when you rest your, your, your managerial work on the values is very important. Japan, a good example, how they use their values as a mechanism for them to be a success in the, in the, in the firm and in the organization. What we are seeing is that in Africa, values, they manage to sustain over time. It is these values that you have to focus on, your own values. Some are not good, but remember these are the values which manage to you to be human being and to sustain your societies. The second one is about the leadership. I don't want, because leadership has been discussed. But the most important thing is the strategy. That's the central issue for you to drive you to that vision. I want to keep this one in mind because these are very important. Now, in issues of leadership, one thing I want to highlight, there's a debate now about this issue of ethical leadership. To what level we can actually ground the leadership into our values and norms. So I want you to leave you with this. These are the thing, the component for any success. And you could clearly see here, the strategy is very central to the, uh, to the issue of success. I just want to use this one. I know um, um, Raymond used this one and, and, and Emil used this one. But it is one thing that I want you to highlight about the strategy. It is issue of risk. And how these components are quite dynamic. And the stabilizing one is the, is the strategy, the concept. Sometimes the issue of risk is quite important because it's not only about ends, means, and ways, it's about how you deal with the threats. And that is central for, for, the, for, the, for, 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 the, for the strategy. Three things I want you from the management side also, things I want you to keep in mind. is a strategic leadership. You have three components that are very important. We did not talk much about strategic thinking. Think out of the box, how much you can do things, because sometimes we are caught up in a system whereby we produce the same everything. But when you talk strategic, you get away and look at the bigger picture. Another one is strategic design. That is exactly the strategy. And then the last one is the implementation when we talk about issues of the management of resources. These are key components and are enriched with this issue of value. So let me go now to some of the components. I'm just because this is a, 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 a summing up of the, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of, of the of the module one. I would like you to go back with this, with this, with this, uh, with this uh, 
this 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 uh, this this model. What I like with it, it is from U.S. Army War College. It is so comprehensive, and it's something I want you to take it with you to help you. It exactly coupled with what Emil uh, presented. What is good with this one is that you can see a very important component of any strategy, external and internal threats, as you can see from the end. But the most important thing is this enduring values and beliefs. This is about the, uh, the, uh, the national purpose, that's the vision. And look at these three components. It is at this level that you can, you, I mean, when you talk about the national objectives, the ends, and the national power, and the strategy. It's a very good, it's a good model that you can, help, can help you when you are talking about the national, uh, national security development in your countries. Let me now go further, uh, because some of these issues I have been discussed. But let me come to issue of vision. How many countries have vision? Or can you raise your hands if you have vision in your country? OK. The good thing about Africa, we have wells of visions. We have so many of them. So many, so many. 2050, 2060, 20, 2040. The question is that what quality of vision are we having? To what level the people have been engaged in it? How much are we committing ourselves to it? So it's, the issue is not about the vision that you have in the offices. It's the vision, how have you involved the citizen? I know a good example. Botswana is one of the good examples when they engage themselves with the citizen and they use the traditions and values to develop that vision. I know also of Rwanda. I know also of uh, Namibia. I'm just selecting. Please, when we talk about vision, it is about how much we are related to the people. Second, national security strategy. I just want to highlight one point which is very important. The difference between, and I think Emil said it, and I want to hammer on it, the defense, national defense strategy and national security strategy. When we talk about human security, Human security is larger than the defense. And it is related more to the citizen. It's about human security. Sometimes we mix up between white paper, defense uh, policy, and then the national security strategy. And that's the point I want to highlight about this strategy with other documents. I will come to you later on about the security sector reform. Now, Oh, sorry, I was talking about different things here. Now, when we talk about a strategy, is this what I call a strategic equation? Ends, ways, and means. In actual national security strategy, is about how you can balance between your national policy and national power. What do you want to do, and are you able to do it? And these are strategic decisions that you need to make in the national security. It is about how you modify and adjust according to the situation. And these are the parameters that you need to assessing your risk or modifying your ways or means and, and, and ends. So I'm talking generally about this one. Does it matter? Is it, is it important? I'm giving you this, this map. It's showing the relationship between stability and economic growth. And as you can see, the countries in the first quadrant, these are the countries having a high growth and higher stability. <coughs> Look at them. Ethiopia, Rwanda, Tanzania, Cote d'Ivoire, Botswana, Uganda. It's very difficult to say that they have national security strategy. But they have one of the components of success. Maybe leadership, vision. Your system is working. Some systems are working. But interesting, look at the countries that are well endowed with resources. They are in a high growth, but what? Low stability. Actually, my country is the last one 
low growth and high and, and low stability with a lot of endowment. So it's not a method of that having national, but the, the component of success are reflected in some of these countries that are actually excelling. I would say the, uh, the, the fastest growing economies. Now, let me come to South Sudan. This is a country well endowed with a lot of resources. When you talk about means, actually its income is almost three times than the one of Kenya, five times of, of, of Ethiopia, the income per capita. And the goodwill of international community is a country, is, if it is based on the means, this country has no any other option except to succeed. That is South Sudan. I have never seen such a, a sole country with good intention with a huge resources. Resources, means. Now, how did they manage to harness these resources to achieve their objectives? This is what happened. National vision, very good vision. Vision 2040. And some of us here, and I know it's not only South Sudan, sometimes we have experts coming to draft us these national visions in the offices. I'm one of them. I wanted, actually, I was engaged in this, developing this vision, and we did not have a chance in order to engage with the citizen. We use one of the firm working about the, uh, this focus group discussion to see what are the things people can put into the year. Leadership was not engaged in this, in, this, in this process at all. It was not their interest. Second, issue of tradition and values. Always we assume our citizens are ignorant. We can be able to act on their behalf. In fact, there's nothing they can add it to us. We know it. We know what they want. So we could, and because, and especially for the liberation movement, because we fought for them, we shed blood, and we can actually act on their behalf. And we tend to forget our traditions and values. Last, the, the national interest. For South Sudan, the national interest was, we have been dominated by Sudan, and the right of self-determination becoming an ends by itself. So the best thing is get out of, of Sudan. And everybody was agreeing. And that's very important to look at when you have a, 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 an interest that is so defined for a specific thing. National security strategy were having it. I think the professor was there, Ebo. But it was really uh, among the elites. And it is, it is true, there was a lot of discussion, but then the leadership was not even engaged. But we were dominated by this security sector reform. Political leadership, what I call the curse of liberation. The mindset of liberators. This is what people say, Africa needs the second liberation, the liberation from liberators. And it is happening in South Sudan. The, the last one is the social contract, and I like the way you said it. You know, this is your social contract, it is, it is becoming central. Our commitment to this contract, the way people entrusted the state to function on their behalf, becomes a big issue now. It is abbreviation of this social contract becoming the source of a lot of tension and conflict. Then, weak institution, another one with the curse of oil. So we're having two curses, the curse of liberation and the curse of oil. Oil itself, if you have weak institution, then it's becoming a problem to you. Yeah. So, and then risk assessment. The whole thing was focused on Sudan, but not on our internal conflict, our inter internal cohesion. We took, we took it for granted. So, the results? Look here what happened. Just imagine the, the, the armed forces constituted more than 51% of the, of, the, of the civil servant. The army and the security sector taking about 62% of the budget. Not only this, this is the number of service providers for, for 100,000. Citizen, a I mean citizen. Look, South Sudan, only 1.5 doctor per 100,000. Look at the other countries. 
in, in, in Kenya is about nine. Nurses, two for 100,000 citizens. About eight in Kenya. Police, 450 per 100,000. In Kenya is about 18. And this is comparison to other countries. A clear case of mismatching of the resources. What happened? Conflict. Today, Southern Sudan is having the highest population of refugees. I mean, of uh, IDPs and refugees. Feminists in now. Grave human rights abuses. Country is becoming even the future is not known. It is, it is a, a disheartening to all people who stood with this country. Simple because of its management of such a beautiful and resourceful country. So these are the results. By the way, it can happen anywhere in Africa. It's not only in South Sudan. It may happen tomorrow in your country if you don't prepare yourself now. What are the lessons we can learn from? I would like you, there's a document about the, the poverty of development strategies in Africa. And one of the things they say, there's a power of development strategies because there's a lack of coherent development policies. And there's a lack of strategic thinking in Africa. It is exactly what is happening in the security sector. Poverty of security strategies. My colleague said yesterday, how many strategies do we have for security sector? You have been saying you have so many of them. But the actual ones that are accessible, only six. The second one is that this issue of economic advisors limited the space for us to think even bigger. It is exactly like security sector reform. So there are a lot of things we can learn from the from the uh, from the uh, from the uh, from the development. These are the key takeaways that I would like to conclude. First, the issue of vision, I think, is the component for success. A strategy can make a difference. But a strategy is so dynamic and very fluid. It requires a lot of engagement, a lot of thinking. The last one, please avoid being to be, to be dragged into the situation of South Sudan. It can happen in your country if you don't plan now to avoid and to be strategic in your thinking of how you want to see the future. Let me stop here and thank you very much. Thank you.